In the headlines, INEC conducts Beaver's mock accreditation ahead of 2023 general elections. Governor Zulum goes hard on banks, threatens to revoke their land allocation as new narrow node scarcity persists. FCT minister orders arrest of Federal Housing Authority officials developer over Guarimpa building collapse. And away from Nigeria, nine people killed in terrorist attack on Niger Republic refugee camp. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for joining. And now the details. Ahead of the February 25 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission rolled out mock accreditation exercises across the Federation on Saturday. Now, the mock accreditation was organized to check the lapses in its bimodal voter accreditation system and make necessary adjustments. In Kano, officials and stakeholders described the exercise as satisfactory. INEC National Commissioner, Northwest Zone, Abdullah Hizuru, who led the team that monitored the exercise in Kano, said expressed confidence in the entire accreditation process. Assessment director I gave is the same assessment. We are there together. We saw everything together. The questions were asked together. And the feedback we received were the same feedback. So what he said is the assessment. So far, we are happy with what we have seen in, as, in, as far as the working of the beavers is concerned, is perfect so far. That's what we have seen, and we're happy with what we have seen. Uh, my assessment, uh, I'm very so optimistic, I'm out. very happy, things have been going on very well. Uh, you know very well we are testing the beavers. Uh, so far so good, but we are not leaving any other elements unchecked. So until we go around, and get the report from all the 12 places where we are testing and we get the aggregate report. But so far, so good. The procedure is being followed. Uh, the viewers is efficient. Uh, we are very encouraged and we hope on election day, uh, by the time we look at uh, those gaps and address them, uh, we will be good to go. Meanwhile, the mock accreditation exercise conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission ahead of the 2023 general elections was successful across the 12 polling units of Nasarawa State. Abu Bakar Abdullahi, who monitored the exercise, sent in this report as presented from our studio. The Independent National Electoral Commission INX mock accreditation exercise for voters was carried out simultaneously in 12 polling units across six selected local government areas of Lafia, Awe, Karu, Nasarawa, Nasarawa Egong, and Wamba. Trust TV observed that while INIC mobilized staff for the conduct of the exercise, voters complied by visiting the selected polling units for machine capturing. Ibrahim Jabiru and Fatima Umar were among those accredited at the Shabu Tagabas polling unit of Shabu Kwandere Electoral Ward, a Lafayette local government area. They expressed satisfaction with the exercise. So I received a test from my neck that shall be one for a session of the unit, only unit all three. I came for the mock accreditation and it didn't take a long time to be captured. In fact, I was captured in less than a minute. INIC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Nasarawa State, Usman Ajidaba, who monitored the exercise, speaks. Uh, the exercise is going on smoothly. We are very impressed. Uh, there have been orderliness. The fact that people are even eager to come out for the mock accreditation shows that uh, people are eagerly expecting to. The real election. 
and people are ready. So we have gotten a report from the uh, Karu local government, and uh, the report has uh, been very impressive. We are happy about the report. Yeah, was a massive turnout. And, uh, those who deserve to be accredited. So, and there was other uh, yes. The INEC commissioner further expressed the commission's readiness to ensure that modalities are in place to deliver a credible and acceptable 2023 poll. Borono State Governor Babagana Zulum has directed banks to dispense the new narrow notes via automated teller machines and banking halls or risk losing their lands to the state government. Zulum gave the warning after visiting banks' branches in Maiduguri, the state capital, to assess challenges faced by residents in accessing new narrow notes. Before the declaration, Zulum said that he was unhappy to see hundreds of people queuing at an ATM point where only one out of the 10 machines was dispensing cash. The governor urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to ensure the availability of the new notes and the commercial banks to enable people to access their money. Now, the crisis rocking the issuance of the new narrow notes is far from over as residents of Bochi State are yet to understand why commercial banks are having a hard time complying with the CBN's directives to issue the notes over the counter. Some customers who spoke to Trust TV expressed dissatisfaction with the attitude of banks towards issuance of the notes despite being ordered to do so. Adamu Imam reports. The Central Bank of Nigeria recently directed commercial banks to commence the issuance of new Naira notes at the counter to caution the effect of Naira shortage occasioned by the redesigned notes. Many believe that staff of the banks are not helping the situation as queues to assess cash still persists. The CBN says it deposited enough money into banks here in Bauchi State. So why is it that in some banks, even if you enter, they only give you 20,000 Naira in a day? While at, the ATMs must, while at the ATMs, some people spend the whole day. This is not good for Nigerian masses, to be honest. Even if the banks receive enough cash from CBN, we are yet to see the money because I entered the bank and they told me they will give me only 5,000 Naira, but I saw them giving someone a huge amount of money. When I asked, they said it is their staff. I believe this is too selfish of the banks. We expect that government should help the masses not the other way around, that this policy is for the poor people and is targeted at improving our economy, they should increase the withdrawal limits so that people will not be subjected to this hardship. The situation cut across almost every bank as others lamented that they spend the whole day just to withdraw cash. Since morning we have been on queue, but nothing has changed. So far, I am number 103 and we haven't gotten the cash. The sad part is that staff of the banks usually treat us badly, while others bring people's ATM cards and withdraw for them. It is unfortunate here. The truth of the matter is that the banks are not treating customer well, especially this one. They attend to their staff and friends through ATMs while we watch. We have been here on the queue since morning. All they do is give priority to those they know and leave us stranded. Commercial banks should be fair to all, for God's sake. Despite these challenges and agitations from frustrated Nigerians, the Central Bank of Nigeria says that Naira redesign policy has come to stay. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission has arrested officials of two commercial banks in Abuja and Oshun State for allegedly sabotaging the new Naira Notes policy. A statement by the ICPC spokesperson Azuka Ogugwa said that the arrests were in continuation of its clampdown on elements, frustrating efforts to make the redesigned Naira Notes available to members of the public. Ogugwa said an Abuja-based bank official was taken into custody for her deliberate refusal to upload cash into her branch's automated teller machines 
though the cash was said to have been available and people were queuing at the ATMs. In a related development, the ICPC compliance team in Oshobo busted a bank in Oshobo, Oshun State, where some ATMs were loaded with cash with their wrappers unremoved, preventing the cash from being dispensed. The team therefore directed that the wrappers be removed and the cash loaded properly while operation manager of the bank was arrested and taken for questioning. Similarly, seven point of sale operators and a security guard were arrested in Oshun for charging exorbitant commissions for the cash. The Inspector General of Police, Osman Al-Khali Baba, has ordered the arrest and subsequent prosecution of all individuals engaged in the sale or abuse of the Naira notes issued by the Central Bank of Nigeria. According to a statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, Olumuiwa Adejobi, on Friday, the directive is in furtherance of the federal government's policy and drive to uphold the provisions of the CBN Act 2007 and dignify Nigeria's currency. The IGP ordered the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of the Force Criminal Investigations Department and the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of the Force Intelligence Bureau to place officers and men of the department and the bureau across the nation on high alert. The statement directed police and commissioners of police in charge of police commands and formations to carry out full enforcement of the provisions of sections 20 and 21 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Act 2007, which criminalizes, among other things, the hawking, selling, or otherwise trading, spraying of dancing or marching on the narrow note, falsifying or counterfeiting of the bank notes, refusal to accept the naira as a means of payment and tempering with the coin or note issued by the Central Bank of Nigeria. A fire outbreak on Saturday destroyed shops in Damaturu, the state capital of Yobe. The incident happened at Sabung Feji quarters near the residence of former governor of the state Ibrahim Gaidam. It was reported that over 10 shops with properties worth millions of naira were gutted by fire. An eyewitness, Ahmed Idris Ahmed, who confirmed the incident, said that the fire was triggered by a surge in electricity voltage in one of the shops. The destroyed shops, according to reports, housed fabrics, used clothes, shoes, provisions and other items. The continuous increase in price of fuel and its unavailability has continued to generate reactions. This time, some residents of Oka who spoke to newsmen described the situation as one that will bite harder on the already poor population. Checks at some filling stations reveal that shortage of the product has caused operators to hike the price to 140 and 150 per litre. At one of the filling stations at Inugu Onisha Road, the product sold for 370 naira per litre early on Saturday. It's now been funny for a couple of days, ever since they started the change of the old naira notes to the new naira notes. Inflation has been the order of the day. People are suffering, people are going through a lot. The currency, this Nigerian currency, I don't know how to explain it. It has opened door to so many forms of hardship to people. The fuel subsidy affects us so bad, really the transporters. First of all, getting a fuel is the biggest issue. Secondly, getting money to buy the fuel is also an issue because when you buy fuel at high rates and you go out there to pick passengers, they don't agree to the price you tell them because things are hard. What for the person that will give up Nigeria, new Nigeria? That is what everybody prays. Somebody that will give no the, the the feeling of the masses. What the masses need? There is hunger. Food scarcity. Money scarcity. No work. You're watching the news update on Trust Television, coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how Ruga settlement keep nomads in Katsina. Details of this and more after the break.
documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back from that break. This is the news update on Trust Television. Here's a look at the top stories again. INEC conducts Beaver's mock accreditation ahead of 2023 general elections. Governor Zulum goes hard on banks, threatens to revoke their land allocation as new narrow notes scarcity persists. Now, the minister of the FCT, Mohamed Bello, has directed security agencies to arrest the officials of the Federal Housing Authority and the developer of the collapse suspended two-story building in Abuja. The coordinator of Abuja Metropolitan Management Council, Umar Shuaibu, disclosed this at a news briefing on Saturday. Shuaibu said that the minister directed the security agencies to arrest the FHA officer saddled with the responsibility of supervising the project. The coordinator also said that the minister asked the security personnel to arrest the Federal Housing Authority officer in charge of granting the development permit and the engineer supervising the development for alleged manslaughter. The building under construction collapsed at about 11 a.m. on Thursday at 6th Avenue in Guarimpa Estate, trapping 24 persons while three were confirmed dead and 21 persons rescued alive. Katsina State Government is to commit over 6 billion naira for the establishment of Ruga ranches across 10 local government areas of the state. The money, which was donated by the federal government to reduce the movement of herders amidst insecurity in the area, is expected to benefit 10 local government areas with high level of insecurity. Abdullahi Amadi completes the story. The 10 benefiting local governments are those bedeviled by insecurity as the federal government deemed it necessary to reduce the constant movement of herders from place to place due to insistent attacks on herders by bandits. In each of the 10 local governments, 100 hectares of land will be provided to be used as grazing reserves and construction of some other basic facilities. Among the facilities to be put in place include hospitals, veterinary clinic, slaughterhouse, boreholes, schools, dairy markets, and artificial decimation facilities. The purpose of this building is to confirm and see whether the control is on ground. Today I'm happy that uh, what I'm seeing, the control has performed very well. It has achieved almost 40%, 45%. What is on ground? So we believe uh, by the next four weeks, we uh, almost complete this project. All, all the projects we have all local governments. So I believe by end of March, first of April, we are open all this project, inshallah. The establishment of the Ruga ranches is specifically a federal government initiative to address the insistent farmers' hardest clashes and other security challenges facing the state. The state government has started sensitizing the benefiting communities on the importance of the projects and the need to take ownership to safeguard the facility against vandals. Residents who are mostly Fulani herders are extremely happy with the state and federal government's initiative 
of providing them with social amenities to enable them settle in one place. This will also assist in boosting their socio-economic well-being and give the Fulani herders who for long felt marginalized a sense of belonging. I never thought in my entire life something good like this will ever come to us. This project had already addressed our over 200 years problems, which hampered our socio-economic growth. We thank God for all of these. My appeal is to the beneficiaries to jealously make proper utilization of these facilities, which they have been yearning for, for some decades ago. Today, your dreams have been actualized. You have a better life. Stakeholders, including the special advisor to Governor Masari on livestock and grazing reserves, members of the State Assembly and Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association, visited the project sites in Jibia and Basari local governments. Abdullahi Izumayamadi, Trust Television News, Katsana. The president of the Court of Appeal Justice, Monica Dongba Mensem, says that the court has received more than 600 pre-election matters from its 20 divisions from November 2020 to date. Justice Dongba Mensem disclosed this when an EU uh, delegation led by Ambassador Samuela Isopi paid her a courtesy visit in her office on Friday in Abuja. The president expressed joy with the visit, which she said provided her an opportunity to engage views, share experiences, and learn from the respective experiences in their countries. According to her, transparency in the electoral process is one of the core values of democratic stability in a nation. She said that the active involvement of election observation missions in Nigeria to ensure free, fair, and credible elections was appreciated. It is pertinent to state that the role of these observant organizations have greatly impacted the resolve to review the Electoral Act 2010, out of which came the Electoral Act 2022, with some laudable innovations to strengthen our democratic policies and ensure credible elections. The Court of Appeal has reviewed, developed, and expanded the scope of working materials for judges on the electoral process. We now have the Judicial Electoral Manual, which incorporates decisions of the Supreme Court and of those of this court on critical fundamental sections of the Electoral Act. The European Union election follow-up mission headed by uh, Mrs. Maria Arena. And uh, I remember that on that occasion, you uh, already developed some uh, of the points you raised today. And one of those was really uh, the importance to uh, support the judiciary on building the capacity uh, of, uh, of justice on uh, election related matters. And I'm uh, glad to say, even if I understand, and uh, uh, of course I agree that it might not have been enough. I'm happy to say that from that meeting, uh, we were able to support the court uh, in the uh, organization of uh, uh, training of uh, uh, 300 judges. And we also um, uh, have trained uh, uh, secretaries and support staff. Uh, because for us, I mean, uh, this is something that we see uh, as being crucial uh, because we know uh, that it really can contribute improving the electoral uh, process by uh, improving and promoting uh, election dispute uh, um, uh, resolutions. Now, away from Nigeria, heavily armed terrorists stormed a camp housing refugees from neighboring Mali in western Niger and killed nine people. A local official said on Saturday that the attack took place on Wednesday at a camp in the Tohua region bordering Mali. A security source confirmed the attack without giving any details. Tahua lies in a zone bordering Mali and Burkina Faso, two countries hit by insurgency and have come under repeated attack since 2017 by armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. There are over 61,000 Malian refugees sheltering in Tahua and nearby Talaberi. 
according to the United Nations. After the departure of the French soldiers from Mali last year and a pullout soon from Burkina Faso, there will be only 3,000 of the troops left in Niger and Chad to fight terrorist groups. And in sports news, uh, Madagascar pipped uh, Niger 1-0 uh, in the third place match of the ongoing championship of African nations to emerge the tournament's third best team in Algeria. Now, Jean Razafin Drakotus uh, goal was all Madagascar needed to win their first ever Chan tournament medal as they defeated Niger in the third place game on Friday. This is the first time the two nations have reached this stage of the Chan. Before the game, the Nigerians, who did not concede a goal until the semi-finals, lost 5-0 against the host Algeria. Madagascar scored nine goals in four games, conceding only three in the process, while the MENA of Niger returns without reward in their fifth participation. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.